G'day everybody, Nick Dingler here again for another Construct 2 tutorial. This time around we're going to make breakout in a couple of videos, about four to be honest. We are going to focus on primarily using graphics that already exist from another application and focusing a bit more on that behaviours and programming throughout. Now this first video is just going to be setting up the playing field and I just want to say quickly that I am assuming that you know a little bit about Construct, okay? You've used it to make very basic games or you just played around with it at least a little bit. Okay, before we even go creating our game in this video, there is something we need to do, okay? So the first thing is we're gonna have, not that folder, a file called NES Style Breakout Graphics. Now I didn't create these, I actually found them on an indie resource forum and I'm gonna put the link to the file down the bottom and I'm also going to put a link to the original forum post so you can well basically pay tribute to the guy who made the things but essentially we need to get the graphics out of this file initially and to do that we're going to need one or two programs well you can use more but one or two that I recommend 7-zip is the one that I use and it's really easy okay I'll put a link to the actual website down in the description and also WinRAR if you're that kind of person if you prefer that one but anyway, once you've got one of those programs installed, specifically 7-Zip is probably the easier one to use in my opinion, you're going to right click on that file, click on 7-Zip, and extract to NES style breakout graphics, okay? And that's going to create a folder called that, with all the files inside of it, okay? So let's go inside development graphics, and you can see these are all the things that we use. If you've never played breakout before, this is what it looks like. You've got a paddle down the bottom and a ball that bounces around, knocking the bricks out of the sky. Now we're not going to use all the graphics, we're going to use some of it. So I'm going to leave that open in the background, I'm going to go back to Construct 2 and we're going to make our project from scratch and then get all of our objects into the game. So let's go File, let's go New, Empty Project is perfectly fine and just go OK. Now before we do anything, let's set up our project the way that we like it. Let's click on New Project and let's set the window size. So I'm going to set it to 800 not 80, 800 by 600, okay, and I'm actually going to call the game Breakout. Now, if you're the kind of person that likes to put in an ID, an author, things like that, go for it, okay, but now let's set up the level. Now, we're going to actually utilize multiple, multiple levels in this tutorial, so the first thing I'm going to do is rename Layout 1 to Level 1, and we're going to set the layout size to the same as the window, so 800 in the width and 600 in the height, okay. We're set to go, so let's get all of our graphics in there, and we need a few of them. So let's quickly go back to the folder. And what we're going to do to get the graphics into Construct is a couple of ways you could do it. The easiest is just to grab and drag into the program. And the awesome thing about grabbing and dragging it is it not only creates the correct object, you can see it says Sprite up there, you can see it's named it, and you can see it's already set the graphic in there as well. Now the one thing I want you to avoid if you can, but it also can be handy if you're doing animations, if we're dragging in multiple of them at the same time, if I click and drag all these blocks into Construct, you can see it creates one block, named block blue, which is obviously the first one, and where did the rest go? I can show you where the rest went if I run the layout. And hurry up. Okay, see how that was flashing colour? What that means is dragging in all those pictures together, it's made an animation. And I can show you by double clicking on the sprite. Yep, let's move that up, move that down. There's all my frames. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to import all those different ones in one hit. So I'm going to right click and delete this guy. And I'm going to drag them in separately. And it's not that slow. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the paddle. And that's it. Now you can use the power-ups later on, but let's just focus on this for the moment. Okay, now you've got all those in there, what I want you to do is we're going to create what's called a family, and it's going to be a little bit hard. If you're working off the free version of Construct 2, you don't have access to families. Okay, but what families are, is it allows you to make a group, and you're allowed to put as many objects in that group that are related to each other. And everything you do on the group applies to everything inside the group. So for instance, all these blocks are going to be the same. They're just a different color. So they're all going to be solid. They're all going to be able to be destroyed. Okay. So we're going to just do one family and do all of our programming towards a family. And it's going to apply to every single block. If you have the free version and you don't have access to families, what I suggest you do is just work on your blue block 
and get that working to start with. And when you're done, you can see what programming you have to do for the rest of the blocks. So let's create the family for the moment. Sorry if you can't do it. Let's right click on family and go add. And you click on the ones you want and you click the add button. So let's go blue and click add. And you're just going to continually do that for the rest of them. As a quick way though, I'm going to hold control, click on the rest of them, add, and go OK. Now you can see it defaults to family one. I want to call these ones blocks. All right. So we've created our family. And if I expand blocks, you can see that the family blocks has all of the blocks inside of it. So if we add physics to the family, every single one is going to gain physics. Now, before we do anything else, okay, I want you to highlight. So click and drag and select every single sprite that is on your screen, just like so. And then I want you to click the delete button on your keyboard. Now, I know that's really, really weird. And I know that's a very interesting message. And I want to explain this first. You have deleted the last instance of some object type. So what that means is we haven't deleted the objects. You can still see they exist in our project up here. However, what we have done is we've deleted the last one on the layout. Okay. If we were to try and use the ball object, let's say we try to create one and there's not one on the layout, Construct will actually give you an error. Okay. Now I know it sounds really weird, but that's something we're going to deal with in a few in future projects, unfortunately. So for now, we've got one more object type I want to insert, all right, or two actually, and then I'm going to call it quits for this video and go to the second one. So up here on object types, let's right click and insert a new object. And we're actually going to use the mouse to control our paddle this time. So click on mouse. Don't worry about naming him because mouse is pretty self-explanatory. And then we're going to do a one more. Let's right click and let's insert a sprite. And this is going to be the wall of our game. Type wall, click to insert him, and let's give him a really butt ugly color. So click on the pad or the, the fill tool. Select your butt ugly color, click in the middle, let's close him, and we're good to go. So we can delete the wall because we're not going to use him just yet. All right, we're set to go. We've got all the objects we need. We just have to start adding some behaviors and start doing some programming in the next video. So I'll see you then, everybody. Ta-ta for now.